Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Murder of Amy Dudley. Elizabeth I's Love Rival Today we associate the man who was closest to gaining Elizabeth I's hand in marriage as Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester. Dudley was the Queen's favourite, and the two were very close, but Dudley did attract a great deal of suspicion. Anyone who got close to Elizabeth at the time was viewed by others inside the royal court with watchful eyes, as they believed they could be making a powerful play for more favour. But Dudley was different. His relationship with Elizabeth at times did seem exactly like that, a relationship, and there is debate as to whether he and the Queen did have intimate relations. But there was much more intrigue around the Earl of Leicester, and much of this was very dark as his first wife, Amy Dudley, or Amy Robsart, mysteriously died under very suspicious circumstances. Amy Robsart was born in Norfolk to a rather affluent farming family. She was educated well. However, she began to court the Earl of Warwick's son, a young Robert Dudley, and shortly before her 18th birthday, the two were married. They were the same age, and they met prior to their wedding, Contracts were drawn up between the two families, and it was said that Amy would inherit her father's land after her parents' death, and it's believed that the two were in love, but William Cecil, Elizabeth I's chief advisor, later commented that it was a marriage based around sexual relations. The marriage was celebrated on the 4th of June 1550, and at the time, King Edward VI was even there to witness proceedings. Now, at the time, John Dudley, the Earl of Warwick, Robert's father, was one of the most powerful men in the country, so the match between his son and now daughter-in-law helped to establish his strength in Norfolk. The couple lived together at court or with Robert's parents, either in Somerset House or Ely House. Robert Dudley was later given Somerset House as a beautiful Renaissance house, but trouble was on the horizon. Following the death of Edward VI, Lady Jane Grey was on the throne for nine days, but was quickly ousted by Mary I. Lady Jane Grey was Amy Dudley's sister-in-law. Amy's husband was then thrown into the Tower of London and sentenced to death. Whilst Robert Dudley was inside the Tower, Amy, his wife, was allowed to visit him whenever she liked, and he was kept there from July 1553 to October 1554. Following his release, he became rather short of cash, but their families helped the couple get back on their feet. After the death of Amy's parents, the two inherited Amy's father's land, and Robert then left to fight Philip II of Spain, who was at the time Mary I, the Queen of England's husband. Amy continued to consolidate her fortunes whilst her husband was away, and later, in 1558, the couple tried to find a residence for themselves. However, it was following Mary I's death and the ascension of Queen Elizabeth I that Amy's husband's fortune changed. When Elizabeth came onto the throne, Robert Dudley became the master of the horse, and he was always in view of the Queen. Elizabeth became besotted with him, and it was clear that by April of 1559, the Queen of England was in love with Robert Dudley. It was even debated inside the royal circles whether the Queen would marry Robert Dudley, and some members even debated that when Amy was out of the way, the Queen would encourage a marriage proposal. It was noted at the time, in 1559, that Amy Dudley became very ill, and it's rumoured that she had an issue with her breasts, possibly suffering from breast cancer, but things remained good for Robert at court. The Queen would not let him leave her side but he did visit his ill wife on a number of occasions, and Amy even came to London. Her health did improve, but she was wary of becoming sick again, and Amy continued to travel around the country. Elizabeth I, however, was seen as one of the prize catches for any European prince, and many inside her government were trying to manufacture a marriage for her. Robert Dudley considered divorcing his wife, and it was even stated that to rid him of Amy, he considered sending her poison to get him out of his marriage. Following a visit to London in 1559, Amy Dudley would see her husband for a final time. In December of 1559, Amy moved into a stately home near Oxford. Her apartments were large, and she was given the best suite in the whole house, which had a separate entrance that led to it. 
and a grand view of a terraced garden and a deer park. She had a modest household of ten servants and ordered a number of dresses and clothes, but also was given gifts from her husband. However, then things went very wrong. On the 8th of September 1560, Amy Dudley was found dead at the bottom of some stairs at Cumnor Place, where she was staying. Her husband, who was based at Windsor Castle and was staying with the Queen, was told of her death the day after, and he ordered an inquest to see what had occurred. It was said that Amy Dudley has woken early and her servants told of a number of strange things about her. One stated how, I have heard many tales of her that taketh me judge her to be a strange woman of the mind. Her maid stated that she might have suicide in her mind and many questioned her mental state, saying that her fall down the stairs could have been the result of her taking her own life. Later, it was also considered that her fall and death was caused by nothing but misfortune. However, a more sinister account could be reached. The coroner stated that Lady Amy Dudley, being alone in her chamber, accidentally fell down the adjoining stairs, and she sustained two head injuries, one to depth of a quarter of a thumb, and another to depth of two thumbs. It was said her own body weight had broken her neck, and that she died instantly from this. She was buried at St Mary's Church in Oxford, and Robert Dudley mourned her for six months. However, what couldn't be prevented was the rumour mill turning at court, and the suspicion arising around Robert Dudley being involved in his wife's murder. It was said that there was grievous and dangerous suspicion in the country, and Dudley was shocked at the accusations. William Cecil stated that he himself was worried about a possible marriage with Dudley and Elizabeth, and the thought of Dudley being King Consort was concerning. He helped to spread rumours about Robert to raise his standing. Dudley didn't help his case, as before Amy's death, he told the Spanish ambassador about how the Queen wished to marry him. Gossip even spread to European courts. But later, Robert Dudley returned to the royal court after mourning. When he returned, Elizabeth continued in her affection. Robert is believed by other members of the court to have come back to marry the Queen, but her reputation was greatly damaged by the scandal that Robert was linked to. Dudley himself knew his reputation lay in tatters and maintained the findings of the jury. Further propaganda against Robert Dudley emerged, with the Protestant writer John Hales stating, The Lord Robert's wife broke her neck in Oxfordshire. It was thought she was slain. Other accounts would state how Robert Dudley allegedly paid servants or members of her household staff to push her down the stairs and to make her death look as if she had taken her own life. This was common belief that Dudley was involved in the plot to murder his wife so he could then freely marry the Queen, with Amy dying from a tragic accident, albeit orchestrated by himself. Then he would not have to be the divorcee who married the Virgin Queen. He would be free to marry Elizabeth and act as the King Consort. Modern day theories do back up the evidence of the trial. They stated that she died of a broken neck after a fall from a short flight of stairs, and that she was found undisturbed. It was considered that she did also suffer from breast cancer, and that the cancer could have spread to her spine. The effect of this is that the cancer could have weakened her spine, meaning that any fall could have been catastrophic and resulted in death. There are further arguments that Amy Dudley took her own life due to her depression, and possibly due to the fact her husband was evidently in love with the Queen of England, and she was losing the man she loved for a number of years. Murder is seen as a less prevalent theory today, and historians also point the finger at William Cecil, who had a lot to gain from the demise of Robert Dudley, to portray him as a wife-murdering schemer. Most modern-day historians, however, have disregarded Robert Dudley from a murder of a plot to kill his wife. But what cannot be disputed, however, is how Amy Dudley died, and yes, it may be under suspicious circumstances, but she was killed falling down the stairs. Ultimately, Queen Elizabeth would not get what she initially wanted in a husband in Robert Dudley. The two were rumoured to have had a physical relationship. However, he would later marry one of Elizabeth's ladies-in-waiting, Lettuce Nollies. This greatly upset the Queen, and she never truly trusted the Earl of Leicester ever again. Amy Dudley's death is one that today is still shrouded in mystery. 
Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.